Hey, what's up guys? So I just finished wrapping up the reflow oven project where I converted a standard toaster oven into an Arduino controlled reflow oven. And uh, you know, the results turned out pretty good. You know, it's not perfect, but what do you expect? It's a $19 toaster oven. So you're not gonna get the same kind of quality as like a $3,000 reflow oven that you would actually buy for professional use. But you know, it turned out pretty good. Uh, it turns out that the, the hardest part of the whole project was actually just tuning the thing to follow the reflow profile and maintain a consistent temperature anywhere in the oven. So, you know, if I put a board way in the back of the oven versus the front, it would reflow the board in the same way. And also not to destroy the boards if I went too hot or ramped up too fast too, or ramped down too fast, you know. There's all kinds of things like that you need to regulate. Um, maybe a bit of a disappointment to you guys is that I decided not to use a PID control loop. So, you know, when I got all the electronics working, I did a few tests just, just to bring it up to temp and see how well it could regulate temperature just by simply direct heating. So, you know, if the temperature inside the oven was measured to be less than the set point, turn the heating elements on. If the temperature inside is over the set point, turn the heating elements off. That was it, and that's how it actually works right now. But that way, you know, it sort of oscillates around the set point, and there's not too much over or under shoot. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. If it was like swinging like 20 degrees over the set point, then maybe I would have, uh, you know, implemented some kind of PID control loop. But you know, for this, you know, it really wasn't needed. So. Uh, anyway, let's take a closer look at uh, what I got going on over here. Okay, so let's start with the coolest part of the whole reflow oven, which is the electronic strap to it. And uh, what we have here is the ultimate Arduino prototype board, which I talked about a few months back. And in fact, the whole purpose of this reflow oven project is so that I can reflow the surface mount parts to the programmer board and then eventually have these for sale soon. So anyway, we have the prototype board here. There's an LCD screen that, that tells you what the temperature inside the oven is and the status of the reflow process. Um, push button that just simply starts and stops it. And then down here is the Maxim 6675, which is the K-type thermocouple amplifier. So that's how we're getting temperature readings into the Arduino and it knows to turn the heating elements on and off. And uh, I'll break all that down and we'll look at the data sheet and how that works and everything. There's actually a tiny little board down there because it is a surface mount IC. There's a little breakout board for that chip down there. And I'll, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Um, but you know, one thing I wanna talk about is uh, in the last video, I think I mentioned that this solid state switch was running really hot. And, uh, and that concerned me, so I actually mounted it to a heat sink that I found laying around, and now the thing runs really cool. So it's, it doesn't run cool, it runs kind of warm, but nowhere near as hot as it runs by itself. So it's almost, I mean, you need the heat sink, okay? So just make sure you mount that to a heat sink. Um, and that's pretty much it over here. So, so on the back here, I, I drilled some holes through the back and mounted a little PC fan. The fan isn't touching the metal, you know, because otherwise it would melt. So it's actually kind of stood off of the back a little bit. And as it's heating, it's not always on. It's kind of like, it's giving it like a little love tap every once in a while. Like whenever the temperature is above the set point, it gives it like a little like, I think two to 500 millisecond love tap, which, which doesn't like cool down the air inside the oven. It just kind of moves things around. I'm kind of using it to circulate the air. And also when I'm ramping down, I want to turn it on full blast so that it does cool it down. You know, that's the, the purpose of it. So you probably noticed that I put tin foil here on the front. And at first I didn't, but I noticed that I could not get a board to reflow if it was on the rack way in the front here. It was amazing what the temperature difference is from the front to the back. And if you just held your hand in front of it like this, I mean, you could just feel the heat heat loss out of the oven. So I put a few layers of tin foil on the door here, and now it reflows aboard the same from the front to the back. So that solved that. Okay, so if we take a look inside the oven, you can see that 
I'm using the bottom rack here, the bottom rack rails to, to reflow the boards. And that seems to work better than, you know, at, in the top rack here. So I'm using the bottom rack and I have the K-type thermocouple ran up and it's just flush with the rack and the probe is right here. And, and you can see way back in there, I, you can see the holes that I've drilled out for the, uh, the PC fan. And then you can't really tell, but on the top I put a uh, piece of tin foil on the top heating element to kind of, I'm using it as like a heat deflector so that it kind of evenly spreads the heat out. So it's not just an element with just heat going straight down. It's kind of like a hood I put on top of the element. And that's pretty much the oven. So now let's take a closer look at the circuitry. Okay, so the first part of the circuit I'm going to talk about is the thermocouple amplification circuit and this is all handled using the max 6675 ic and this is a surface mount ic so i have a little breakout board i think it's a soic 8 um i'll put a link in the description uh, below to where where i bought the chip and the little the little breakout board that i soldered it to so uh, this chip is pretty simple and straightforward hookup, but uh, I wanted to talk about it because there's a few things about it that are kind of kind of gotchas, okay? So pin one's grounded, pin four is your five volts, uh, five, six, and seven are all your data uh, pins. So you've got your clock pin, you've got your chip select pin, and you've got the data out pin. And these go right over to the Arduino straight. And when you look at the code, that'll make sense to where these connect to. I have I have them in the code when I declare the the uh, the I/O pins. What these all connect to? Uh, pins two and three are the K-type thermocouple input, and it's kind of a funny thing about thermocouples. So there's different types. There's J-type, and there's K-type, and there's whatever. But K-type thermocouple is red and yellow, and red is the negative, yellow is the positive. So make sure you get that right, and you probably want to Google it just before you do it because I might even be wrong right now. <laughs> I think I'm right. So there's one thing you can do too is you can monitor uh, open wire conditions like if this got snipped somehow. I think to do that you ground pin 2 to pin 4. So you ground your negative lead to your to or wait not to 4 I mean to 1. What am I thinking? So pit ground to pin 2 so 2 to 1 is how it would go. Um, I'm not doing that though because I don't care. It's just it's just going straight over to the inside of the reflow oven. So who cares if I get an open wire? Um, so I really like this chip because it handles all of the A to D for you, the analog to digital conversion. So there's a lot of other ICs on the market that that interface to thermocouples, but a lot of those just simply amplify the signal and make it linear. So like temperature the the input here outputs like a signal here from like zero to five volts so now you know i don't like that because now i have an analog signal to deal with and then there's inaccuracies in the way i measure that analog voltage whereas with this chip it handles everything and i get the nice clean just digital signal the digital bytes i read those in and i know what the temperature is out here now one thing I wasn't going to get into, but I'll talk about this anyways, is, you know, when you're measuring temperature, it's always a frustrating thing because you're not sure if, if what you're measuring is right or wrong, you know. If you don't have a calibrated probe, how do you really know what you're measuring here is accurate? So I have a Fluke meter and a, a cheap Chinese meter. Both have K-type thermocouple probes on them. And I took those two meters and this, and tied them all together, the probes all together, and put them in the reflow oven. And it was funny because all three, all three measurements were off. You know, the fluke and this measured pretty close, but within five to ten degrees. The Chinese meter was like 20, 30 degrees off. So, you know, but then again, those meters are not calibrated. This isn't calibrated, so who's right, you know? And I, I guess if you did have a calibrated probe, there are ways to calibrate this in code. So, you know, it, it the, the data sheet claims that this is going to be linear. So you're not going to, so wherever you are, you're going to have a straight line 
straight line across temperature that, that should met, line up with the straight line temperature input here. So you get a straight line input here, you're gonna get a straight line output. And what I mean by that is, is that you can shift that straight line in code. So it's like a, you know, it's just a linear function. Y is equal to your slope times X time, you know, plus the, the uh, Y or, or anyway, I'm rambling, but you can calibrate this in code. It's not a big deal, but I figured that eh, if it kind of lined up with the fluke, it's probably okay. But I'm just, just a fair warning to you guys in case you're gonna go about this and use this chip for something else. I don't know, maybe something you need a little bit more accuracy with. So you probably wanna calibrate it. Okay, so anyway, this is an analog measurement. So this supply that you feed this thing has to be really, really quiet. Okay, so you're gonna have like, if this is on a breakout board, like the way I have it, you've got two wires that come over and feed in here. Well that's full of noise, you know, I'm controlling a fan, I'm turning a solid state switch on and off, the, the, the Arduino is probably making a ton of noise. So make sure you put your caps across pins one and four as close to the pins as possible. So throw down a 0.1 microfarad, throw down a one microfarad, throw down a 10, throw down a 100 if you have to. Uh, I think I only have a 0.1 and a, a one and a 10 across these pins. So uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so the next two circuits are the control for the solid state switch and the fan. Uh, so the solid state switch, I think I might have talked about in the last video, but just in case I'll talk about it again here. So this is the Arduino pin right here. And through a 1K ohm resistor, we turn on an NPN transistor. And this is a 2N3904 transistor. It could be any small signal transistor. You're really not turning on that much current. So, you know, when this, when this pin goes high, this transistor saturates and you get current flow through here. So it acts as a switch. This, dotted, this little LED here in the dotted line here represents the solid state switch. So it's just like an optocoupler that drives the, uh, the triac in the solid state switch. And on the anode of that, or the positive lead of the switch, we have, we're connected straight to five volts, and then through an anti-parallel diode here, so it's kind of like the same theory of an inductive kick. And this was recommended in the data sheet for the, uh, for the solid state switch. And it might be more of like a, of a, of just to guarantee that it turns on and off, and I'm not going to really break into the theory of that, but, uh, but anyway, I have the anti-parallel diode there and then through two 100 ohm resistors. And these are the current limiting resistors for that optocoupler LED. Okay, and that's pretty much the circuit. So that's pretty easy. And then over here is the fan control. So same idea. This is the Arduino pin here. And then through 1K ohm resistor, we're turning on a, an NPN transistor. Same transistor I used over here, 2N3904. And in this case, we definitely are turning on an inductive load. So I have an anti-parallel diode. And these diodes are, could be anything. They're just you know, small signal diodes. So on the positive lead, we're connected right up to 5 volts so that when this turns on, current flows and the fan turns on. So that's pretty much it. Um, and then in the code, you'll see which Arduino pins I actually have these connected to. Um, again, you know, there's, there's two other things in the circuit. There's a, a push button, which... I don't think I really need to talk about. Um, that is just connected to a pull-up resistor. So, you know, something uh, like, actually, maybe I should, uh, is it a pull-up or a pull-down in there? I'm trying to think how I have it actually wired. I think it's a, uh, let's see, I think it's a pull-down. Yeah, it's a pull-down. So, uh, Pretend this is kind of, so we have a resistor, this is a 10K, and then the other side is connected to ground, and then this is connected to the Arduino pin. That's what I have is the push button, so that when the button is, is, is pressed in, this 10K resistor is pulled up. This would be 5 volts right here. All right, anyway, pretend I didn't even write that in. Uh, and then the only other part of the circuit that I'm not telling you about is the LCD, which... 
when you look at the pins that I've selected in the code, I think you'll understand exactly how to hook that up. So that's pretty straightforward stuff and we don't even have to waste time talking about it. So now I think what I'm gonna do is show you how to actually reflow a board. So the process of actually reflowing the board. And I think when I originally shot the video that you're about to see, I did it before I optimized the oven. So I'm running a different reflow profile and I'm, um, and, and also the oven itself is, is completely different. So I didn't have the tin foil in and you know, it's kinda, it was my first board reflowing and I thought I would uh, record that, you know, to show you how that went. And it actually went pretty good. So anyway, let's take a look at that. Okay, so I said I was gonna talk about the, uh, or, or show you the reflow process, uh, actually reflowing a board and applying the solder paste and everything, but you know, that's kind of, I, when I filmed that, I wasn't really narrating anything, so it's kind of boring. So I figured I'll squeeze in all the good stuff first and then save the boring stuff at the end if you actually don't think this is boring. So anyway, uh, let's let's talk about the code uh, that, that's running on the reflow oven because there's some good stuff in here and a few things that you need to pay attention to. So uh, let's start right at the top. Uh, we're including two libraries, the SPI library to control the uh, MAX uh, 6675, liquid crystal display library, uh, pretty basic stuff. Set it up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, uses all those pins, it's a shame. But anyway, then a bunch of uh, variables. Um, one new thing that I started using is the, uh, we're declaring here a string variable and this is kind of handy because you can uh, you know when I'm displaying the status of the reflow oven it's kind of handy to have this so right here reflow status of four strings we have four strings uh, this, uh, that display the reflow status so press the start which is like the idle the idle um, stage the preheat critical and ramp down so like if I wanted to display this on the screen we just do an LCD dot print of zero so this is zero, one, two, three. So it's kind of handy. Uh, moving right along here, there's a bunch of variables. Don't worry about any of that stuff for now. Uh, the void setup. Uh, so we set up the serial port 115.2 for the, uh, not 115.2, but 115.200 to communicate to the computer to either uh, to either send the data just to display it on the serial monitor, just the current temperature, or send it to the a processing sketch running that you can actually display a logged a view of the, the temperature, which is kind of handy to see kind of like what your reflow profile looks like. And I do have some processing code that I was using to tune the oven, but uh, you know, it's I'm not gonna get into it because it's the same exact code I used in my last project, which was the heartbeat monitoring project. So check out that video. It was right before I posted this one. Okay, so anyways, then we set up the LCD screen and do a little splash screen, and then all of the pins are set up. So 13 is the clock, 12 is the data in, and 2 is the chip select, all for the max 6675. 9 is the output to the switch, the solid state switch, so to that 1K ohm resistor that drives the base of that NPN transistor. 14 is the input to the Arduino from that push button to start and stop the process. 15 is output to the fan. And two again is the, why do I have? Oh, my bad, that's not a setup. So pin two is chip select to the max 6675, which is the chip select and it's active low. So when you write it low, it activates a conversion in the chip. So when it's high, it's idling. Okay, so let me actually, show you that here so if you see here chip select there's like a little you're probably not gonna be able to see that but there's a little bar over the the cs there and that indicates that it's active low so when you write it high that means that it's off basically okay anyway then we set up the and that'll make sense when we actually do when we grab data off that thing all right then we set up the spi to the uh, the 6675 and you know we can run it at i don't know what the the max frequency is but we don't have to run it that fast you know this is temperature so it's kind of slow moving so we'll just we'll run the spi clock pretty slow 
and then uh, do an spi.begin and kick things off. All right, now here's the void loop, and this is kind of this is kind of cool. So the way I the way I wrote this code was very object oriented, meaning that it's not true object oriented programming, but it's it's basically we in the loop there's no real code running the loop is just simply calling out subroutines of code so functions and it's it's handy to do things this way it keeps things organized especially when you got a whole bunch of things going on so the first thing it does is it goes and grabs the temperature off the 6675 then it'll figure out it goes and does the reflow update which figures out what the set point should be and where it is you know in the reflow process update the LCD screen and then actually turn the heater the heating elements on and off check the push button input and then finally control the uh, the fan um, and then the last thing I tacked on here is to, to print off the uh, temperature on the serial port to the uh, to the computer so uh, anyway it, it just kinda keeps things handy and if you want to turn something on or off like if you don't want to actually you know if you're debugging the code you can simply just not control the heating elements like something like that so it kinda just makes things easy alright so anyway let's jump into the first thing I do here which is get temp this is where we actually interface to the max 6675 and the first thing we do is enable the chip for a conversion so we write digital pin 2 which is the chip select pin low and you know it is active low so that enables a conversion and then the first thing we do is delay and this is very important so if you look at the data sheet here you'll see that this chip select pin here there's this little delay here and I don't know if you can see that it's TCSS and this is really important and, and so I mean it's called out here and in fact I know it's important because before when I first wrote this code I didn't have that delay in and I was getting all kinds of garbage data so if you go up here you'll see where you where does it so let's say that conversion time here and it shows typical is 0.17 seconds maximum would be 0.22 seconds so it's kind of slow actually that's like 220 milliseconds so but anyway for our application here it really doesn't matter you know we're not in any hurry to do anything so f I figured eh, throw 500 milliseconds in there and that seems to work pretty good um, Okay, so, and the reason is, you know, it, it does its A to D, its analog to digital conversion within that time, and then we can do our SPI transfer. So this is where we grab the data from it. And SPI is kind of an interesting thing. It's because, you know, as you send data, you're getting data back at the same time, okay? So that's, that's something to remember, especially when you're only receiving data, like in this case. We're not writing anything to anybody. So what we do here is second, so it sends out two bytes. It sends out second, or it sends out the, the second byte and then the first byte. You know, let's take a look at the data sheet and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if we look at one of these diagrams here, not that one, there's a better one than that. Let's see if I can't find it, here we go. So you can see here, it sends out two bytes and it sends out the first byte first with the most significant bit so D15 and all the way down to D0 and we're, we're an 8-bit microcontroller so we can only read in one byte at a time so we're gonna read in bit 15 to bit 8 first and then we're gonna read bit 7 to bit 0 second so what I did here in the code to read those two is I called the second equal to spi.transfer of 255 and this 255 is just a dummy bit it could be anything you want or not a dummy bit a dummy byte okay because you have to send out something to get something okay you can just hold the pin low the whole time if you want your output pin so you could just put a zero in there if you wanted to but you could put anything you want though because we're not connected to anything okay so we grab the second part of the 16 bits and then we grab the first part so now we have two bytes of data from the chip then we write the chip select pin high to disable it and then yeah we chill for another half a sec there 
Okay, and then what we need to do, now we have two bytes of data and it's all kind of garbage. So you can see here the 12 bit temperature reading that we actually care about is kind of like in the middle of everything. So it's kind of a pain. So we've got this from zero to seven is our lower byte. From eight to, to 15 here is our high byte. So we need to combine just this to this into an integer. You know, that's what we care about. That is our temperature sitting in there. So what I decided to do was first, so we have this zero to seven. If we shift it to the right three times, so if we go one, two, three, now we've shifted the low byte all the way to the bottom where it needs to be. We chopped all this crap off that we don't care about. Now what we need to do in our second byte, which is from eight to 15, is we need to shift it now we need to shift that not to the right because if it was if it was going to the right we would start losing stuff we need to shift it to the left okay because we're going to add this byte to this byte okay so we're going to combine the two so we shift this one to the right three times now we've got some empty space at the top to finish off the 12 bits so what we do with this one is shift it to the left five times, I believe that's what we do here. Yes, shift it to the left five times. Because if you look at what happens here, is this is zero, one, two, three, four. So the, so the reason we shift it to the left five times is so that this here becomes bit five in this, the whole reading, okay? Hopefully I'm explaining that right, but that's basically what I did here, and hopefully that's right. Okay, so now we have the 12-bit reading, but we don't really, that, that's really useless to us. We need to know what it is in degrees C. So this is another, this is another thing that's kind of goofy about the chip that, that you need to pay attention to. So it says that, the, that it measures from 0C to 1024C and it's 12 bits and then it says 12.25 degrees C resolution so what that means is you get 0.25 degrees C per one bit and you could do that and you know they're not just guessing there 12 bits if you go 2 to, two to the 12 you'll get 4096 so you take 4096 bits divided by 1024 C bits per C and you will get 0.25 so that's what they did and that's how it works so you have to multiply what you did here by 2.25 and then you'll have your temperature so now you've got your temperature so the next thing that's called out here is reflow update and this is where we do all of the uh, you know the timing of the reflow profile and everything in this this sounds complicated but it's pretty simple so we have everything's broken out into stages so the first stage is the idle stage and we just set the set point to zero because you know just don't do anything don't heat anything up just keep it at zero uh, I guess if we're negative temperature you would actually be heating up but whatever keep it at zero um, if reflow stage is equal equal to one this is preheat you know, before we go there, let me show you something. Down the line here is the switch check, which is, because I'm going to go in order here as, as, you know, as it would actually happen if you were doing it. So switch check. If we go down here, switch check is right here. This is where it checks the button. So if the button's high, clear the, clear the screen. Um, and, it, and if the stage is greater than zero, if it's not idle, that means you're, you're trying to stop it and make the stage zero otherwise you're going to be starting so make the stage one and then put a little delay on there so so that's what I wanted to show you is how it actually gets into the preheat stage okay so now we're in there we push the button we're in reflow stage one now okay and then the first thing we do here is do a check at the temperature and the start time so start time is just this, this variable that only happens once when you enter into a stage so that you can timestamp the start time as, as to when you actually entered into that stage. You know, because 
because everything in the reflow process needs to be timed. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go into this preheat stage, and basically what I'm doing here is I want to start timing it once once the temperature is greater than 100 degrees C, okay? And then one, once it is greater than 100 C, make my start time equal to the millisecond free running timer in the Arduino. So that, that's just a timer that just keeps going basically forever or until it runs out. And it's not the greatest way of doing something like this, but it works. So we grab the, the start time there if start time was equal equal to zero so i mean normally you're going to be at like 50 c or, or like 30 c or something like that and then it goes up and then as soon as that temperature hits 100 grab the time stamp of start time okay and i'm gonna i'll talk more about these this this in a second but anyway before that even happens though we set the set point to 120 and and these are all temperatures that just happen to work for for me in my toaster oven. This might not work for all toaster ovens. This might not even work, or definitely won't work for all solder paste either that you're, you're working with. Because I'm using, you know, lead-free solder paste and it requires higher temperatures. But, you know, when I first did this with the highest, with the actual temperatures recommended by the solder paste, I was actually like burning the boards. So, there you go. But I don't, again, I don't have that really uh, tight control of everything either. So anyway, I don't want to keep going on here. Okay, so we set the set point to, to 120. So it's going to start ramping up to 120. As soon as it hits 100, start the timer, and that's our soak time. So grab the start time. And then we want to also monitor the rate of rise time. And basically, this is pretty simple. So like, ignore this for now, blah. It grabs old time which is just the current millis, millisecond timer, and it grabs the old temperature, which is equal to the current. So the next time through this, now it has the temperature it was at previously, and it has the new temperature. So it has the change in temperature since it last looked at it, and it has the old time and the new time. And of course we divide by 1,000 so that we have it in real seconds, and then that's our rate. Okay, so if the rate is greater than 3, kill the set point to kind of slow things down a little bit. That's all that does. Alright, and right here is where it'll actually increment to the next reflow stage. So like right here, what, I'm, what I keep talking about is this start time. So if the current millisecond timer minus that start time, because this only occurs once, it'll grab that and then immediately start time is greater than zero. So this that can no longer be true. So it grabs at one time when, when the temperature is above 100. Okay, so anyway, we grab this, and so, so as soon as, it, when, it, when it's above 100, and it's been above 100 for 60 milliseconds, or 60 seconds, 60,000 milliseconds, and the start time is not equal to zero, then increment the reflow stage. So obviously the start time at this point would not be equal to zero. So increment the reflow stage and drop the start time back down to zero. So you can kind of see like now why I do this start time equal equal to zero because when a stage is complete, it kills it back down to zero. Okay, then it jumps down into reflow stage two because we just incremented it. And now it's in the critical stage. So this is the, the, the part of the reflow profile where it peaks up at its top temperature, the flux is now activated, and it'll start reflowing into solder. Okay, so we're in reflow stage two, and the same thing again, start time now is equal to zero, because we just set it to zero, but the temperature is not at 150 yet. Okay, so it was just regulating it at 120. So I don't want to kick this timer in until it reaches 150. And these are all tunable kind of parameters of the program. You know, you, you deal with, you tune this to what works for you. You know, I had a whole bunch of scrap PCBs that I played around with until I got this just right. Okay, same thing, grab the start time when that does equal. But at this point, now we're going to regulate it 170 C. The rate is calculated again, maybe not necessary here because you are trying to ramp up as fast as possible, but 
my reflow oven is kind of laggy, so actually this is probably never true. Okay, same thing for the rate. Uh, this time now we're going to only do it for 20 milliseconds. Or why do I keep saying that? 20 seconds. Okay, so when it's above 150, kick this off. So when it's above 150, we only want it to be above 150 for 20 seconds. Okay, next stage is ramp down. And this is... This is nothing more than um, setting the set point to zero and flying your way down. It's monitoring the rate. I had this at one point equal to negative six, you know, because that's that's according to the, uh, the I think that's in the data sheet for the FT232RL, which is one of the chips on one of the boards I was reflowing. That you shouldn't ramp down faster than uh, six degrees C per second. So, um, Anyway, that that wasn't quite working out, so I put it. I, I jacked that way up. And if it is if it is ramping down too fast, then just throw the set point way up high, and then it'll turn the heating elements back on. Okay, so same thing again here to calculate that, and then re and then ramp down for 60 seconds, and then increment. But no, at this point we don't increment the reflow stage. Instead, we set it back to zero, which is the idle state. Okay. Uh, I probably don't need to, and and then that's the entire the entire reflow process right there. That's how I control it. So it's pretty simple. Um, sorry if I found sound a little tired here. I'm kind of winging this thing as I go. <laughs> okay. So the LCD update down here. Uh, that I probably don't have to get into this too much. But this is where we we print the screen. You know, we set the process variable, um, which is the temperature. And then I actually show the rate on there, and then I, I go down to the second row and uh, display the, the reflow stage. So you can see like reflow status, display the reflow status of the reflow stage. So the stage is going from zero to three, and then which is within this string variable here, it'll display that, that stage. So it's kind of cool. That's it. Um, heat control down here, very, very, very simple. So this is actually turning the heating elements on and off. So if the temperature is ever lower than the set point, hey, turn them on. Otherwise, turn them off. So down here is where I would actually write the PID control loop, but I didn't. I decided not to do that because it, it didn't. It wasn't needed. It actually, can just by doing this, it can actually regulate temperature pretty well. So okay, we already talked about the push button. And then the last part of the code is the fan control. And I this is another part of the code that you can play with, you know, kind of depending on 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 your your fan, how much air is moved by your fan, uh, the cutout in your oven, and the, the volume of your oven, all of that uh, can be tuned here. And maybe you don't even need a fan. So Okay, so basically, if the reflow stage is equal to zero or equal to three, which zero is idle, three is ramped down, just turn the thing on, full blast, always on. Otherwise, turn it off. If the reflow stage is greater than zero and less than three, now it's now what this means is it's either in a preheat or a critical stage. Um, go into this piece of code here. Um, which checks to see if the temperature is above the set point or the rate of rise is greater than one. So, so if we're a little too, if we're a little hotter than we need to be, then go into this and give the fan a little tap of 500 milliseconds. So this is what I was talking about, the love tap. So it just kind of just jolts a little tiny bit of air in there, not enough to cool anything down or do any damage to your to your heating control, but just a little bit. In fact, I kind of went, I went all the way from like 100 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds, and then I brought it all the way up to 500, and it still seems to work pretty good. So uh, anyway, that is all of the code. So let's check out how I actually refloat a board. So here's the workspace I have set up to apply solder paste and place the parts. Um, everything is taped to a board here so that I have something a little bit more portable that, you know, because you want to make sure that you tape everything to a, a hard surface, you know, not like a book or something. So I could have taped everything directly to my desk here, but then, you know, it's going to be in my way. 
So uh, what we have here though is a couple extra PCBs taped down to a board so that they surround the board you want to apply solder paste to, like that. And then on top of that I have the stencil here which is perfectly lined up with the pads on the board. Okay, so that's my setup. Here's the solder paste. It is all warmed up to room temperature now. So we can go ahead and try to apply some of this. I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the top of the board here. It's not gonna take much for this. This is only my second board ever reflowing. I just finished testing one. All right, and this is a homemade squeegee cut out of a cardboard box. So let's see, I'm gonna kinda of get it smashed down a little bit. And here we go. All right. That looks pretty good. I carefully remove the board. Okay, yeah, that looks really good. All right, now I can place the parts. All right, so I just finished uh, soldering on the through hole components. Uh, the board turned out pretty good after uh, going through the reflow oven. So let's test it out, see if it works. Hopefully I don't blow up my uh, USB port here. Where the heck is it? There we go. Okay, so that was good. I saw some orange LEDs there, the TX and RX flash for a second and the green LED is on indicating that we do have the 5 volts going through the board. So next I'm going to actually now plug it into the reflow oven control board down here which is on an ultimate prototype board. Plug that in. Okay. And this is sending out data once per second so you do see the uh, RX LED there flashing indicating that you know the uh, it is receiving data from the microcontroller um, All right, let's see uh, if we can open up something on the screen here to s actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm just going to upload a sketch Okay, it's got a new USB port on it and Hopefully it update. Yep, and you can see it is uploading so that's good and I'm going to open up now a serial monitor window and hopefully I see the new data coming into it and I do. So that's a success. I would say that the board is fully operational and does work. So anyway, let's, uh, I don't know where I'm going to go after this, but anyway.